So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Rupert to the uh, Benchmark Conference. Let's welcome Rupert. Right. Um, where's the clicker? There we are. Good. Thank you. Um, I feel like a cat amongst pigeons or, or I've just walked into the lair because Radium 1 has nothing to do with search at all. Um, so it's slightly concerning when I see search conference everywhere. Um, however, this is an interesting topic, which um, I don't know if anybody in here is aware of it. Has anybody seen? OK, one of you, good. Um, two of you. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give it some context first. Without sound. <laughs> The beauty of social media um, is that you can make a video like this, which is really quite poor, uh, but it costs us absolutely nothing. And uh, it was really just a 24 hour uh, period of sort of what media consumption is like for the average 25 year old uh, employee. Um, clearly not doing enough work, but obviously consuming a lot of media. Um, the, the reason for the context is because when it comes to uh, trying to understand this kind of new world, new ecosystem that we all uh, exist in from a business standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, uh, is this is a horribly complex uh, world that we now have to um, deal with. Um, and one of the things that um, we're, we're all trying to figure out is how to, if you like, connect the dots, connect audiences uh, everywhere so that we can drive ultimately better results for our clients. Um, quick commercial break, rating one, very simply. Um, we are a digital advertising platform. Uh, we're an integrated stack, so we have software that creates data um, in, in this sort of set of sharing and social space. Uh, we, we have a data management platform, and we, um, we are also a delivery platform for pr programmatic display advertising. So cross device, um, agnostic, and media. Um, and we're growing. Um, we're an independent business still. Um, but that's, that's it about rating one. I have two wonderful colleagues who have a, uh, an office here in Manchester, uh, Toby and Laura, who are both here if you want to talk to them afterwards. Um, but I'm really here to talk to you about dark social, um, which is not meant to be sinister. Uh, we didn't come up with this term, by the way, um, and it's not really social either, so that's a good start. Um, what dark social really is, um, is something that this guy, Alexi Madrigal, uh, who was the tech editor of Atlantic.com. About two years ago, three years ago, lost time, 2012, um, when he was working for Atlantic.com, was basically trying to work out from his analytics package, and I'm sure you all use Google Analytics or, or Chartbeat was the one he was looking at, uh, and really found that actually there was a huge amount of traffic that was arriving at the site unannounced, essentially in the dark. Um, and all that really is, and I'm, I would challenge anybody here to kind of go against this, but if I said to all of you here, if I just asked you to hold up your hands, how many of you today shared a piece of content? Any kind of content. So pretty much 95% of you. Um, how many of you used Facebook? 40%, 30%. How many of you used Twitter? Same number, that's quite surprising. Uh, although we are at a conference, so. Switch it. How many of you simply copied URL, copied a piece of text, copied an image, and then pasted it into an instant messenger email? OK, so quite a few of you when you think about it. So the reality is this. The vast majority of traffic that is happening um, is happening via this dark method. And what we mean by that is uh, most people um, will simply copy a piece of content regardless of what that content is. And they will paste it into the most easily recognizable platform that, that is usable either on a mobile device or uh, in work on your desktop. And that typically is email um, or uh, an instant messenger of some kind. There is nothing new about this. This is really, this is what Berners-Lee invented. The, the, the concept was we share as humankind 
here I'm now allowing you to share anything, anywhere, anytime, across the globe uh, in the simplest way possible. Uh, and there was the, I don't know if any of you know ICQ. Do you remember ICQ? Business back in the late 90s actually got bought by AOL for 300 million. Um, it now sits within the mail.ru uh, portfolio. But it was really the first instant messenger of its kind. And it was very much a Geekville uh, place where everybody would, that's how they shared content around the web. That has not changed. If anything, consumers now are much more at ease with how to share content around the web. And so we now talk about content increasingly needing to be shareable, um, not just searchable. Because if you look at the, 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 the sentiment around sharing and what, what spikes in terms of things that are most shared, they tend to be the things that emotionally are the most important to people. Uh, and in fact, our previous presenter, Paul, very kindly pointed out this wonderful bit.ly slash funeral music 2014, 32,000 shares. I bet you it was a lot more than that. Um, because a lot of these things are simply links that are copied and posted around the web, and your analytics program will not track it. Um, so it's a very, and, and for that reason, it's this, this, this idea of referrer data that you get from known sources like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and so on, you won't get from, from a dark platform. Uh, and we know, because we did a study, um, that this is around 60% of traffic that we tracked um, over a period of 30 days across 900 million users globally. Um, that is a very large chunk of audience that you're missing out on if you're trying to, one, understand audience, but then ultimately activate upon that. Activate regardless of whether it's advertising, email, any form of marketing communication. Um, so we did a really boring thing. We did a white paper on it, um, and that's all I'm going to say. You can look at it on our website, um, but it does give you the, the, the length and breadth of uh, of what that study is about and, and, and sort of looks into the, the detail and the weeds of, of what dark social is all about. So fortunately, from 120 slides, I broke it down to two. Um, I looked at dark social by region, um, just to kind of give you a sense of the proportion of dark across the world. Um, not surprisingly, North America uh, is slightly more on the Facebook uh, and sort of what I call public social network front. Uh, for obvious reasons, um, and Europe um, is the most dark. Um, there's this other thing that oh, I always kind of like to play with a bit. People often say to me, but email's dead. No, email is growing, um, and actually email is, is, is frighteningly large in terms of how we use it. Uh, and the big reason for that is you get a lot of commentators out of Silicon Valley talking about what's next after email. We're going to invent something that you know, we won't need to use email anymore. But here's the fact, most of those people are either teenagers or very young people who don't use email. Why? Because they don't work. They don't go to an office and get an email address. And therefore, that's why email is still used and will continue to be a very large portion of that. Although instant messaging now, whether that be WhatsApp or you know, Snapchat, or, or Snapchat's not really in the, in the same realm. Um, but it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting space. So that's what it is by region. When we broke it down and looked at sector, again, not entirely surprising, um, but you'll see those sectors where there is a very high proportion of dark, um, automotive, finance, FMCG. That's because people don't share that stuff on their Facebook pages or on Twitter necessarily. If you're looking at an insurance policy, you will go to your nearest and dearest, your most trusted contacts. Uh, to either get advice or give advice. Um, and that is typically why those categories tend to be higher on the dark side. But then even if you look at things such as entertainment and sports, where people are prepared to sort of open up and tell everybody that they're red or blue on their, face, on their Facebook page, there is still a huge proportion of dark social um, that, is, that is occurring. Um, so understanding what dark social is, and then actually being able to measure and quantify that was, was, was one thing. Um, but we really wanted to understand the power of sharing. Uh, and so we did a, we did a, um, a survey uh, in key markets across the globe, about 10,000 people. Um, and we, we just sort of took a look at how it is that people typically share at a consumer level. Um, and this is just from the UK, um, a couple of, couple of slides 
uh, to kind of give you a sense there of uh, one, how popular sharing is, two, how is stuff being shared generally. Um, not surprisingly, the older, uh, the older the person, there tends to be more dark that happens as opposed to the social networks, networks that we like. Uh, An email still remains more important uh, than social networks. And this is a consumer survey, so this is not just us tracking it. This is genuine questions that are being answered. Um, another big part of this, of course, is we're now seeing a huge proportion of people that are dual screening. Um, in fact, on TV, it's around, it's around 80% um, from the survey that are saying you know, they are sharing and that they are uh, posting content whilst watching TV, uh, which is obviously quite concerning for quite a few brands. Um, and then also around 60% of all the sharing that we see today um, is now happening on mobile devices. Um, so probably not surprising. We looked at it from a brand sta uh, standpoint. You can't really make this out entirely clearly, but I'll, I'll let you know. So uh, at the top there are the companies that have the highest proportion of sharing. Um, I think that top one there is Amazon, no, Apple. Uh, Apple, Disney, Google, um, Intel. The, the red is Pinterest, um, and the only reason we really bring that one up because the one here that is, uh, that is most red is IKEA. Why? Because companies that have a lot of product that they want to display um, use Pinterest because obviously the form of Pinterest is great on a visual front. Uh, and it's interesting to see that uh, a lot of their stuff is getting shared by Pinterest. Um, just a few examples of companies we uh, we power from a sharing perspective. Uh, Tesco, Zoop is a Dutch company, but it's the, the largest sort of travel portal in, in, in Holland. Um, Zoop and Tesco, you'll obviously be familiar with. Um, but even in Tesco's case, um, anytime you go onto a Tesco's product page, uh, of which they have tens of thousands, um, you'll find the ability to share via Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, email. Um, our tool called Post simply powers that sharing capability. So that's how we're able to measure what's shared, when it's shared, which channel it's shared in, who's sharing the share, what's going viral. Uh, and in Tesco's case here, you can see that the vast majority is people simply either copying the URL um, or copying the link or copying the image and putting it on an email or, or instant messenger uh, to their friends. That makes sense? Good. <laughs> Um, Zoopla, actually, just as one example, Zoopla, 95% of all the sharing that happens across Zoopla um, is people copying the URL, simply taking the URL, copying that, and pasting it to, to friends, um, which is not surprising when you think of a, a, the kind of content that you're dealing with there. So the problem, the problem is you've got all these different connections, you've got all these different networks, uh, and I include IoT here, because ultimately what is happening is everything is supposed to become a network. Um, so the idea is that you need to connect all these different network points. Uh, and that's really the business that we're trying to, or the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, because if you can bring all these different disparate points together from a data standpoint, and then you can, then you can intelligently analyze audience, then you can activate that audience for whatever purpose it is that you're trying to, you're trying to determine. Um, I'll, I've gone through that, so I'll just move on to just a couple of case studies. So Tesco's, um, the first thing we always say to clients, very simply, is today it is highly likely, and Co-op have just displayed it, you are allowing other companies across the globe um, to essentially rob you of your data. We know Google does, we know Facebook does, we know Twitter does. We know why, because they provide this service that it's a, it's a quid pro quo. That's fine, we kind of get that, but you're still not locking down your data to enable that to power your business, to inform your planning, inform your comms, inform your, your marketing operation. Um, so we simply say, lock it down. Bitly, add this, other companies, and I'm not here to, 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 to diss them, they provide an excellent service, but their business models is to package up data and sell that data to the highest bidder. You have no control over that outside of not using that tool, but using something where you can lock down that data. Um, 
So in Tesco's case, they use our tools. We enable them through across the web, uh, so across their owned, across their earned, um, through the URL shortener, plus the sharing widget, and then also within app, um, so, so using an SDK, to harness all that audience in one place. And then they make the decision as to how they want to deal uh, or trade on that particular information. The results, just very quickly on that particular example, half a million engaged users in three months. Um, we delivered a CPA goal, which is far below their, their goal, um, and a far better click to conversion against PPC, which I must confess I was surprised by. Um, but it gives you an idea of where sharing data as a fuel source compared to search data is really now beginning to resonate with, with clients. The one I really like, though, is Universal Music. So Universal Music do the same thing. They use the various parts. They now can ingest their CRM data, essentially take a known customer, anonymize it into a digital persona that's anonymous. Um, and then what they do is they tell us, this is how we're going to define our customer. If someone engages or shares in our content more than 15 times in a 30-day or 60-day period, um, we're going to call them a super fan. And so they define the funnel all the way up. And that's incredibly powerful because now they can actually determine the right message, the right creative to put in front of these audiences according to where they sit in that funnel. If you're just a casual passerby, I'm going to show you an inspirational video that's going to make you jump out of bed. Um, if you're right at the bottom of the funnel, I'm just going to give you loads of value messages. 10% off, get the next ticket, get the next piece of merchandise. Um, and that's, um, that's working incredibly powerful for them, uh, powerfully for them, too. Um, so I won't bore you with the details there. But key benefits, um, capturing data in this world today uh, is about capturing it in real time. Um, because the more data that you have, the less important big data becomes. It's the small data that's really important. Understanding people in real time that you can genuinely act upon. That's incredibly important. It really does improve your paid media investments. Um, we have seen it improve search behavior. Um, and of course, it enables you to amplify your social and your PR um, strategies as well. But some very simple tips. Don't pray and spray, wrap and track. That's what I like to say to people. Um, any piece of content, if you think about it, every piece of content that you create as a client and push out into the digital sphere um, should, be should be traceable. It's your content. You push it out there. You should track it. And that is a very simple process of wrapping and tracking that piece of content. And it can be any form of content. It can be your video. It can be your search. It can be your... Uh, your content, your imagery, whatever it is, um, and ensure that you're tracking that content as you, uh, as you go, because that is the information that's powering your business. Have the visibility into dark social. Try and link that up. Um, and then obviously work with the right providers for that purpose. Equally, this is now, we're now beginning to see the ability to genuinely connect and um, essentially join up the disparate channels that exist out there. We're all far too siloed as businesses. You know, we, it's one customer who accesses content any which way they want to. Our job is to ensure that you're understanding that and able to activate across all channels, regardless of whether that's a piece of outdoor, TV, online, mobile. Um, it's, it's, that is where we're getting to. That is the, the, the nirvana for marketers. And that's what will make marketers the most powerful people within any organization. That's it. Thank you very much.